and welcome back to the channel so today's video the 75th video is going to be about my opinions on this three month project of mine where I said I'd spend three good months at trying to sort out a few of the issues that this 1957 Ferguson has had and had when I bought it small enough issues but I suppose it was just a process of trying to get to know it and to get back working on these uh, petrol paraffin engines. It's been 25 years since I did any work on them when I used to have a Ferguson 20 TVO. I had intended on buying a Ferguson 20 TVO, but this is just something a little bit different. A little bit more refined with the, on the hydraulic side of things with the constant flow, which means you can, you can stop the lift arms at any position between top and bottom that's not the same on the Ferguson where you can only literally ask it to go right up or right down and of course the addition of a high low uh, gives it three high and three low speeds and two reverse speeds high and low so what are my opinions on this what are my plans for it am I going to keep it am I going to sell it it has been a summer project Um. Well, to be honest with you, I've grown fond of it. It's it's interesting, I have to say. It's an interesting project. Most of these are diesel engines, and uh, there aren't as many petrol, paraffin, or TVO engines uh, examples about. So I like that for the fact it makes it a little bit more interesting. I also after doing a bit of work on it, I've found out that it's not very worn. It hasn't done a whole lot of work. If you look at the brake pedal, the brake pedals, there's, there's very little wear on them. And of course the steering, after I tighten up the steering box, is, is you know, it's really, it's really tight. And the front axle main pivot, the, the pin going through and the bushings, they were, they were barely worn in fact I didn't really need to replace them at all only for I had ordered the parts before I properly checked them out um, I'm fairly sure this is an original factory tyre Goodyear sure grip as well so if it is it goes to show how little use the, the tractors had if there's that much tread still left on the tyre the clutch pedal isn't very worn either was told that this tractor was painted about and done up a little bit about 20 years ago so if that's all the wear that's on the paint down to the primer the iron oxide in that amount of years it hasn't seen a whole lot of work of course i did have to do the cylinder head gasket now i have a feeling what happened was the engine was done up and the cylinder head wasn't retorqued after a certain amount of time the head uh, stood stretched uh, became a little bit loose as I found two of them were fairly loose and that allowed a bit of water to leak into one or two of the cylinders so after rectifying that and sorting that out it seems to be sorted there's no uh, water getting into the oil so I'm happy enough I did of course re-torque that fairly quickly after I was run for about half an hour after it was put back together so for anyone who's follow is following these videos on this project i focus most of my attention to the engine and a few small bits such as the steering linkages and the front axle not haven't really delved in another little job i'm going to do is just adjust the wheel bearings there's a little bit of play in both of them that's a very easy job to do and what I might do as well is I might replace the, probably don't need to, but there's a, a grease seal in around there. And I have, a few, I always have a stock of a few of them. They're very easy to pull out and tap in. But I'll take off the hub, wash everything out in the parts washer, repack of grease, and then readjust the wheel bearing. And I'll have a look at that seal in there when I'm at it. Bodywork seems to be in excellent condition. There's the odd, odd little bit of bubble of rust. But I, it's it's fairly easy to keep on top of that with a bit of a oily rag. My plans for it cosmetically are not to paint it just yet. Anyway, I don't know if I'll ever paint it. I'd sooner preserve it the way it is. 
I might buy a tin of paint and uh, the gold paint and paint in around the, the letters as it should be. I have a feeling these badges were replaced when the tractor was done up. Otherwise you would see some gold paint on it. I'm happy with the electrics. I'm happy that the, the neutral starter sl uh, selector switch, I managed to get that working in its original. I'm delighted that I managed to um, you know, strip this down and see that the, the, the brushes are very good or were replaced. And I was delighted then to find that one of the springs in that uh, starter was uh, replaceable from a spare starter. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it in the videos up to now, but I found this old distributor cap and it has the brass connections. The modern distributor caps that we buy are kind of more plastic. This is more ba I think it's Bakelite and they have aluminium uh, connections in them and they do kind of, the kind of a white, kind of a powdery scum builds up in them. And that does not help the spark go through them. So that was something that I replaced um, from the parts basket here. I don't know if that was in the video, but yes, I, uh, I did that. So as you've probably noticed as well, I'm having a problem with the likes of these aftermarket spark plug leads that I bought originally with the new distributor cap. I actually went and made these, if you, it, it, the video is, is up um, a few videos back, and uh, I, I made these out of um, good quality copper core um, spark plug lead, HD lead, and I was lucky enough to find these uh, spark plug, new old stock champion spark plug caps from uh, uh, another Ferguson enthusiast and who was kind enough to, to sell them to me uh, along with a genuine set of uh, Lucas points that would have came would have, the new old stock as well they would have been very similar if not identical to what was fitted to these distributors from factory so and the rotor arm then of course came and the condenser came from a very good company in England called the distributor doctor so they're meant to be far higher quality. Again, both of those were replaced for, with aftermarket uh, products of questionable quality, we'll say. Um, so, yeah, modern parts are a little bit of a grey area, a bit, a little bit now dubious about them. It's lovely to have the, I don't know, is it the, the original one, but it is an original Lucas um, regulator, Volt regulator. Now, some of these, there's two models, there's this one that has the, the bolts that are going through the sides and then there's a more common one that has a bracket on the back that would have been fitted to the Ferguson 20. So it's nice to see that this is all correct and that it is of the right vintage. So I suppose what I would like to do now that I have it starting running fairly well is to get the governor working through use, loading the engine, and uh, I'd like to see it when I set my revs. When, say, for example, I'm in top gear on the road and I meet a big hill, the engine will get loaded and it'll naturally drop. But that governor should should kick in, and that rod, you know, it should come forward and maintain those revs that's what i'd like to do to get that governor working right a proper working governor on these or on any tractor of this vintage or even the ferguson 20 diesel behind it makes the engine a lot more powerful it keeps it juiced up keeps maintains the revs under load and of course when you go down a the hill then the the mushroom shaped um lad in the timer cover uh, will actually come outwards and it'll push this back. It should just reduce the amount of fuel going in. So it should, it should basically govern the engine. That's something that I'd like to do. I couldn't do it until I was more confident in this, that it will drive two miles up the road until I can get onto a very quiet back road and um, be able to do the tests and make the adjustments. So that's something I'd like to do mechanically. Um, I would also like to take off the wheels, get into the brake hubs in there and have a good look around. Um, 
see what's what, see, make sure everything's okay. The brakes seem to be working very well. I did adjust the rods to the same length both sides. I think it was in a row. I think it was basically three foot long each. And then I made my adjustments to each side to try and get the brakes pulling even. So that kind of stuff, the mechanical stuff to make to make the most of what I have without replacing is, is has been the the kind of approach to now. Um, the mud guards are in great nick, a few scratches here and there. I touched up some of them and ran a polisher over them. As you can see that kind of a effect. So a few more to do just to keep the rust from getting worse. I haven't had a look properly at the lift. I haven't even tested the lift with a transfer box and a bit of weight on it. I'm not fussed about that. It seems to be working and it's not going to affect the running of it the or of the engine at all. Um, I have to get around to removing that little plate there. I believe this goes into the hydraulic pump or it's something to do with holding it. So if I take that off, it is below the oil level. There's going to be a lot of oil leaking out. So I all my oil... Um, pans, drain pans are full at the moment because of the other project across the way so I will get around to doing that it's not too bad a leak, it's only ba it was barely, barely weeping so that's the, those are the plans for it so the next dry weekend I'll try and bring it up the road I am trying to cold start it every day to see how you know, how it's, how it's doing if it needs choke if you can just get away with Throttle, trying to get to know it. The, the weather is getting colder, so it is needing a bit more choke. During the summer, it didn't seem to need choke at all. So just trying to get to know it, work with what I have, and enjoy it. I love the sound it makes under acceleration. There's a nice, there's a nice sound out the exhaust, and the underslung exhaust I think really does a lot for the the look of this. It 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 just uh, it brings out the nice round shape of the bonnet and the, the mud guards and uh, it makes the bonnet just look a bit sleeker not having that exhaust protruding so i think that's about it i think i've covered everything of course there was obviously the question of whether or not i would go and when i was after stripping the engine down to, to the to the boards would i go ahead take it out and get a full job done like i've done on the other two ferguson's but no, I, I, I'd sooner work with what I have, and I can always do that down the road if, I, if it needs it. Um, I was more concerned with trying to get oil back into it, get it put back together and see if the water was getting into the oil like it was before. Um, and it doesn't seem to be. So that was more what I was trying to achieve. So I think I've covered everything on it that I wanted to talk about. Three months of work, not too many parts, more so a bit of tuning, a bit of cleaning, a bit of removing and refitting and, and trying to improve and get to know the engine and, the, and uh, this particular model that's a little bit rarer than your usual Ferguson or 35 for that matter. So there's going to be plenty more videos on this. I'm going to try and document and video everything I do. I would imagine one of the next videos is going to be tightening up the wheel bearings, cleaning the, out the hubs, and maybe a bit of governor work if I can, uh, if I can get it up the road in, in the near future to have a look at the governor mechanism. So I suppose all that's left for me to say is thanks to everyone who has um, liked, commented or subscribed on the videos up to now. I'm not doing this for subscriptions or for likes but it's nice to get them all the same and I suppose it does help uh, inspire me to, to keep going uh, at uploading the videos and documenting the, the journey uh, that I'm going through trying to get this um, old, fairly old machine back to a functional state, I suppose. So until the next video, um, take care and thanks very much. Bye-bye.